Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. Now it seems like a lot of these exercises we've been doing have been more definition based and one of these days we're going to get to problems that are a lot trickier and take a lot more work. But today is not one of those days. So we've got this problem and it's pretty straightforward. For the first part, for each j and the natural numbers, by the way, natural numbers do not include zero. It seems like about half people think the natural numbers do include zero and half of them don't. Um, I'm one of the people who think zero is not in there. Anyways, for each of these, let x equal nj disjoint union mj, um, where, that is a horrible n, that's an n, where nu j lives on nj and mu lives on mj. This is possible um, by definition because these are mutually singular. And when I say like nu j lives on nj, I mean that if you give me any, if given any subset of its complement mj, then nu of that subset of mj will be zero and conversely for mu. Okay, so we've got um, all of these decompositions of x um, with respect to the new j's. Let new equal sum from 1 to infinity of new n. Um, or let's call them j just to be consistent. Um, then new is a measure. And that's a fairly straightforward thing to check. I'm not going to go through the details here, but basically, um, actually, sure, let's do it. New empty set equals the sum from 1 to infinity of new j of empty set, which is equal to 0 because you're summing 0 a bunch of times. And if ej disjoint, then new of the, un the disjoint union of the ej's equals sum from 1 to infinity of um, new j, let's call this new n equals 1 to infinity, new n union j equals 1 to infinity ej, um, let's take this from 1 to infinity, then this is equal to sum n equals 1 to infinity, sum j equals 1 to infinity, and we've got the new n of ej's here. And basically, because these are all positive, we can flip the order of the sums. New n ej, then this is just sum from j equals 1 to infinity of um, new of ej, and that's exactly what we wanted. Um, well, that was a little more tedious than I was anticipating. Okay. Now that we know new is a measure, note that for all j in the natural numbers, mu of e intersect nj is equal to zero. And that is because of this mutual singularity thing. Mu is null on each of the nj's. So mu of e is going to be less than or equal to mu of the union from 1 to infinity of en intersected with nj's um, because the union of these things is just e. And this is equal to the sum from 1 to infinity of mu of e intersect nj. This is sum from 1 to infinity of 0, and that's 0. Um, 
And so there we go. So that confirms that E is, um, let's see here, E was a subset of, where did I say that E is a subset? Okay, that's pretty bad. Now that we know that nu is a measure, let E be a subset of N then for all j. So basically, that's the big thing, like the main point of why we just did the thing that we just did. And that was kind of, I should have said that. Um, but e is taken to be a subset of n. And so this confirms that um, for any subset of n, mu of that is equal to zero because um, it's less than or equal to zero, and me positive measures have to be greater than or equal to zero. And so that confer here, let's just write it. Thus, um, let's just write n is null for e. Nope, wow. n is null for mu. Also, for all e in M this time, E in particular is a subset. Oh God, did I say what um, M and N are? I did not. Um, okay. Here's what we're gonna do. This is a simple enough problem that um, I'm not going to go back and re-record this. So we know that nu is a measure. Okay. Let n equal the union from 1 to infinity of the nj and m equal the intersection from 1 to infinity of mj. Um, I claim um, that um, mu lives on m, nu on n. So that's what we're trying to prove here. Uh, and basically we've uh, started that by proving that n is null for mu, so mu must live on m. Now we're looking at m and we want to prove that nu is null here. So given any subset E of M, E is a subset of M J for all J in N. So nu of J of E is equal to zero. Um, and that's just because of how we define this. Um, thus, nu of e is equal to the sum from 1 to infinity of nu n e by definition of nu n. But each of these nu n's are 0 or nu j's or whatever you want to call them. So this equals this. Um, so m is null for nu. Um, also, it's pretty clear that n disjoint union m is equal to x. That's just because of how we define them. And hence, nu is mutually singular with respect to mu. All right. Now, thankfully, even though that was a little bit of a uh, disaster in terms of the presentation, the next one is not quite as tedious in terms of the details, so even if I do manage to botch it a little bit, it's not going to be that bad because it will be over very, very soon. For the second part, suppose nu j is mutually singular with respect to mu, 
No, absolutely continuous with respect to mu for all j in n. Then, nu j of e is equal to zero for all j um, and that's just because of this condition. So nu of e, remember nu of e is just the sum of these things. Um, we're going to use the fact from before that's a measure it's, and it's sum of the nu and ni and we know that these are all zero and so this is equal to zero and then we're done.